In the last video, we built a 4K video editing PC step-by-step, -step. and in this video, we're gonna see how it actually performs. Hey guys, Ray Valencia here from Starstrung Productions, and welcome back to my 4K video editing PC. Thank you so much to all those that hit the like button and commented on the last video where we built this thing in detail, step-by-step, -step. and I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you're interested in checking that out as well. We're gonna be jumping into Adobe Premiere Pro CC, and we're gonna be editing a 4K timeline and the footage is shot on the Sony F55. It's a cinema camera. We have some 4K 60 frames per second footage as well as some Sony mirrorless footage. We're gonna jump in here. We're gonna mix a couple frame rates. We're gonna throw some effects on. And before we do that, let's jump into Cinebench and get a couple baseline benchmark numbers before we do that. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here are all the parts that I used in this computer build. For the CPU, we have the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. For the GPU, we have the EVGA GeForce GTX 1050 Ti Superclocked. For the RAM, I have the G-Skill Trident Z RGB at 3200 MHz. It's the CL16 version. So first, I went in and updated all the display drivers and everything just to make sure everything is up to date. This took about 20 minutes, so we'll fast forward through that. Next, open up Cinebench. You can download this app for free at maxin.net. This is Cinebench release 20. So once you open up Cinebench, it'll show some other computer builds here, some with more cores, some with less, just so you can kind of see where you land in the ballpark range. So first, we're gonna test the CPU in full. This is regular speed, and now we're gonna fast forward two minutes forward and see the results. This six core, 12 thread processor lands at a 29, 29 point score. And this lands just barely above the average for this exact same CPU. Next, we'll run a test on the single core of the CPU, and this test will obviously take much longer, so we'll fast forward ahead 12 minutes and get the results. And in this test, it outscored the 16 core CPUs, 48 core and eight core, but this CPU is the X model, so it is factory overclocked, as you can see at 3.6 gigahertz. Another quick tool that you can download, especially if you're a gamer, is MSI Afterburner. In gaming, you can measure your frames per second, but it doesn't work on Adobe Premiere, so we're just gonna have to measure that with footage. As you can see here, I'm just rendering the last video that we made where we actually built this computer and it's like a hundred something clips and it's 22 minutes long on a 4K timeline. With MSI Afterburner, you can actually monitor all your components usage and temperatures. But unfortunately in Adobe, you can't monitor frames per second. So let's check playback on this super complex 4K timeline before we open up the F55 footage. As you can see, there's no issues at all in full resolution in 4K. But anyways, so let's go to file, new sequence. We are gonna open up a red 4K 16 by nine, 23.976 frames per second timeline. And let's call it PC, 4K PC speed test. Okay, whoops. Speed test, okay, there we go. Okay, and with this, let's go ahead and open up some 4K footage at 24 frames per second footage, just to make sure everything matches up here. Actually, I don't want it with audio, so let's go ahead and drop it here. Okay, so as you can see here, it is playing back perfectly smooth in full resolution in the preview monitor. So. Let's go ahead and drop the video file, three minute clip, down into, yeah, let's cut it right at three minutes. So let's drop this onto the timeline and see how it plays back in full resolution on the timeline. And this was shot in S-Log3 is why it looks so flat. So we can drop a color grade on it here if we want, but as you can see, look, the bar is green here, so there's not gonna be any drop frames through here. Okay, that's good. Next, let's go into another Sony F55 clip. 
that was shot at 4K 60, or here you go, two minutes long. So this one was shot at 4K 60 frames per second at 300 megabytes per second. And let's see how that plays in the preview monitor here. Had a little stutter there, but look at that. If you're getting any value from this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing for future filmmaking videos. No issues at all. Okay, great. So let's drop that onto our timeline. All right, move this over. As you can see, you have a yellow bar here, so there could be some drop frames. So we're at full resolution, 4K timeline. Let's hit play. Perfectly smooth. All right, so this was shot at 4K 60 frames per second in S and Q mode, where it automatically converts it to 23976, and it plays perfectly smooth. So let's stop that. Let's actually speed it up to normal speed, not S and Q speed. So 250%, hit enter, and look at that. It is green now, it's not even yellow, so there shouldn't be any drop frames here. It looks like there's one little, like, little piece of yellow right there, but let's go ahead and play it and see if that area drops. So here we go, 4K 60 frames per second footage, playing at 250% speed, which is actually normal time. This was on a, a turntable. But anyways, so as you can see here, it is playing back perfectly smooth, 4K 60 frames per second on the Sony F55 cinema camera. This is not a joke footage. This is made for broadcast television. So anyways, that works perfectly fine. Now, let's go into some Sony A7S II footage. Uh, this was shot at 4K, no, sorry. This was shot at 1080p. 60 frames per second, so it's a little bit of the Magic Kingdom. Just a little footage here. I just got a little snippet already selected here, so that, that doesn't have people in it. So here it is here playing. Okay, so it is 1080 and this is a 4K timeline. So we are gonna have to go to effects, select this clip, and bump it up to 200% so it matches this 4K timeline, and look, it's still green and that's with an effect on it so let me start back just a little bit on this one and play it just to see if there's any skip during the transition between the two clips it's not an actual transition i just mean where it cuts from one clip to the other so here it goes 60 frames per second footage i don't see any drop frames here it looks good it looks smooth so, okay and then there's some plants and back out perfect so that is that, and that comes out to four and a half minutes. Okay, that's great. So let's go under essential graphics. Let's drop a graphic. Let's drop one of our essential graphics on here. Boom, let's call it four, whoops, 4K 60 FPS. Sony F55, okay, let's change it to, let's select black or green, there you go, it's green. Okay, just so it's different. And as you see, that's red here, cause that is, you know, something that's not rendered obviously, but let's just see how it plays, seems how we're here. Okay, it doesn't like that very much. Okay, so let's render it, hit enter. All right, it's gonna take, Let's open up, whoops, open this up. So it's going for 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 13 seconds. So as you can see, the computer is performing rather fast. And if we look over here at MSI Afterburner, um, you can see that the temperature really hasn't gone up. It's maintaining about 42 degrees Celsius. And for, oh, our footage is already ready. Okay, so let's, Back over here. Let's zoom in and watch how this plays back. Boom, and that is at full resolution, 4K 60 with a motion graphic over it. So that is awesome. Um, next up, let's go ahead and go to File, New, Adjustment Layer, Sure. 
let's drop it on here. Let's drop it across. Let's expand it across this entire project. And let's go under color. Oops, it's auto save. Color. Oh, there it is. So we're gonna go under color and we're gonna go to Lumetri color. And we are going to, let's just change a couple things here. Let's drop the exposure down a pinch. Let's add some contrast. Uh, bring down the highlights. Let's raise the shadows. Let's bring the whites up. Let's bring the blacks down. I'm just randomly doing this. Saturation creative. Let's add a little sharpening. Whoa, a little sharpening. Um, let's bring the vibrance up and uh, let's say just another pinch of saturation. And let's just throw a custom LUT on. Boom. LUTs. LUTs. Okay, so let's go into a LUT. Let's drop Daroli on here. Boom. That kind of messed with the color a little bit, but that's okay because we're not really worried about how this looks. I'm just trying to go through this and show how fast it goes. So let's go ahead and hit enter and look at that. It's going lightning fast here. Obviously I would never use this color grade. I'm trying, I try to do it in like 10 seconds so we don't waste time here. So um, there we go, boom, plays back smooth. Everything is yellow here, but look at that. That's with a heavy, heavy grade added onto it, and it's still perfectly fine. So look, I can even mess with it, desharpen, whatever, faded film, saturation, whatever, and look, it's still playing back perfectly fine. No issues at all. So look at that, that's crazy. I'm using the sliders on it while it's playing 4K footage. No drop frames. It's perfect, and I'm really, pushing some colors around here and doing some weird things. So, okay, there we go. Now, last but not least, let's do an export of this timeline at 4K, 24 frames per second. Let's queue it up under Adobe Media Encoder. So here we are, match bitrate, and let's start it. So this 4K timeline is roughly four minutes long, and we're gonna see how long it takes to export it through Adobe Media Encoder, and hopefully it won't take more than four minutes. We'll see how it goes. 47, 48, 49, four minutes and 50 seconds to completely render a four minute 4K footage timeline using 4K60, using 108060, upscaled to 4K, also using a really random color grade where I threw in a LUT, changed a bunch of sliders at random just to crunch out uh, a quick little grade. And as you can see, it handled all that with a motion graphics template, by the way, all within four minutes and 50 seconds to completion. So I would say that's pretty good. As you can see, I was able to play everything back with no problems perfectly. So there you have it. This is how the AMD Ryzen 5 2600X is working in tandem with the GTX 1050 Ti Super Clocked. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about this combination working together for 4K video editing. Hit the like button if you gained any value from this video. Please consider hitting subscribe if you haven't done so already. Shoot for the stars and I will see you in the next video.